So it's UK champs time again. We're two rounds in, two rounds to go. The halfway stage and we're here at Rookery Waters in Cambridgeshire. If you missed what happened last time, here's a little reminder. So here's the state of play after two rounds of the 2023 UK Champs. After winning the match at Makins, Jamie Hughes takes the lead at the top. He's one of three anglers with a perfect single point from the first two matches. Matt Pillay managed to hold off the other challenges in his section. Tom Calladine's the other angler on two points from two matches. Tom Newton's fourth, Tom Scully and John Arthur move up into the top ten. Andy Power, Andy Kinder and Steve Forster are among the anglers on the next page, with just four points separating the entire top 20 after two matches. So there are just three anglers with a perfect score from the first couple of rounds. But you know what? This competition is so close this year, the entire top 20 are still in with a shout. And it's all about the draw as always, and that draw is just about to take place. Interesting reading of the scoreboard at the moment, fellas. Tom, you've got two wins out of two. You've got one and a second. Top 20 still in it, what do you reckon, Tom? Um, coming into this competition, me and Newt's never fished it before. Top 20 or a top 10 finish was what we would have been happy with. The calibre of anglers, fisheries we've not really seen before. We've given ourselves a proper good chance, I think. We've, uh, we've been on decent pegs, we've fished decent matches, we've shown our ability. Um, but there's still two good matches to go, aren't there? There's still good anglers, there's still good pegs that are still knocking about. And uh, I think it's anyone's game sort of thing. If you look at that top 20, it's some of the best anglers in the country. So uh, they only need two good draws here and at Boston and uh, the more than the fight. But we've given ourselves a chance to start with and there's, there's nothing better than that, is there? And obviously, with us being travel partners, third and fourth in the league at the minute, it's, uh, it's all to play for. Going into this, you're talking about, you know, top 20, potentially you, you being happy. How are you feeling now? Because you're both really still in the box seats over the moon about it you know like I say we were hoping for a almost a top half finish to be the original sort of plan but had a good all both had a good match at Allcroft somebody did a bit, bit better at makings <laughs> um, but yeah top five I, you can't moan about it even my wife's impressed that we're in top five and that says something because she hates fishing so what's it like for you to be in the top ten I'm over at moan with quality of anglers that I'm Andy fishing Bauer. against you've got Jamie and, and things Scholar. like that Andy Power and to be up there it, it's brilliant you know, I'm over at home, to be fair. Tight, innit? But that's what you want, innit? It's, that makes for a good league, makes for everyone all excited, everyone want to go to the peg and think I've got a chance still. And that's, that's what you want, innit? Now, this is, of course, your local, isn't it? So what are we going to expect to see today? I think it'd be good. I think it'd be a lot of fish caught today. Um, weather's actually turned out a bit better than what we thought it was going to be. Um, weather's nice, so I think, I think it'd be a lot of fish caught. There'll be some big weights today. Why do you think it's so tight this year, Andy? Eh... Uh, and I, th I just think it's the venues, mate. I think the venues we pick, they can always chuck a spanner in the works. Allcroft, yeah, they just finished spawning. Makings were brand new, it's been changed round, things like that. Uh, that chucked a spanner in the works for uh, one or two anglers. And this one here, yes, there's a few locals that fish it, but they don't particularly know it. It's a relatively new venue, and there's going to be massive, massive weights in here. So I, I just think that's why it's been close all the way through. So that is what the guys think of their draws. I get the feeling this one is going to be an absolute cracker. Bob, take it away. Well, the match is underway and we have moved over to Crow. This is my co-commentator for today. This is Alex Bates who runs this place. Alex, yeah. I have to say, Looking at the draw, I didn't have a clue where to start today because it's thrown up some really interesting mi uh, mixes, Definitely, isn't it? Yeah, there's some grueler sections, isn't there? Yeah. There's, I mean, this section behind us here on Crow, you've got the leader, Jamie, uh, Dale Shepard, Jimmy, Steve Cook, Adam on one as well, so that's going to be a real tight section as well. But that's happened all over. I mean, yeah. it's, it's weird, the anomalies, the way the draw throws yeah. these things up, hasn't it? You've yeah. got, you know... 
I always think the sort of third match of this series is like moving day. You know, mm -hmm. you've had two matches, you've, people have established where they are, but without getting a good result today, and of course in the last match at Barston in four or five weeks' yeah. time, you're nowhere. What's your feeling about what you've seen of the draw and how you think where it's going to sort of come from? Um, really? I think the overall winner will probably come from Magpie again. Uh, last year's winner, Steve Forster, he's on 34, which is the peg that won this round last year. So he'll be pretty favourable on there. There's lots of good good anglers in that section as well. Alex Doherty, you know, there's some quality field in there. Um, Section-wise on here, I do fancy Jamie. For some reason, six and seven are very good F1 pegs on here. Don't know why, there's no different to any of the other. Mm. But I think maybe it's just where the wind just catches the lake and it just puts a little ripple the more confident of feeding shallow maybe raven uh obviously we'll move over to there in a bit you've got um nick speed on peg four which is a good area um, matt pilly's 14 which i think he's in the right section if he was in the section to his right i think it'd be up against it because the pegs seem to be a bit better in the high 20s um but he's a, he'll do well there as well the wind will be nice ripple he'll catch some f1s early and some proper carp late on um on Jay, you've got Andy Kinder on 38, that's a very good peg, very consistent peg. And um, Andy Power on 41, which is the lake he was on last year. He just moved around a bit further, so I think he'll take some beating as well on there. Five hours ahead, mate, it's going to be fascinating. It is, yeah, definitely. I think that last hour, everyone will be into playing fish, so fingers crossed they are. Well, Al, it's not unusual to see Jamie Hughes playing a fish because he's had an exceptional start to his UK champs. Um, he's obviously fishing method feeder across there and we can see that he's playing a fish. That's about the third or fourth fish I think I've seen him have already. Yeah, I think he's at four or five now on the method. He's sort of, I think he's sort of settled on the method, working out what the lake's all about, assessing where everyone's catching and then I think he's going to, he'll probably stay on if he's still catching, but he'll probably switch once he works out what the right method is for the day. Um, I think he's just feeling his way into the match. You see he's looking around a lot and trying to work out who's catching what, where and how. And It's amazing to see an angler like that doing it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he's so busy. One of the things that's fascinating about this, you were talking about the stocking levels in this mm. lake and the type of fish that they're fishing for. So we know that in the other lakes on the complex, there are some serious units. There's some yeah. big fish. And I know yeah. there are in here too, yeah. but yeah. here on Crow, there's a, a big population of F1s. Mm -hmm which the thing I love about this, the variety that you get in the different sections, you know, these are fish where you have to be quite technical. You have to have the right kit. You have to, you know, yeah. set up in a certain way because if you don't, explain to us what happens. Um, well, the F1s, uh, they do follow the wind a little bit as well. So they're not in every peg. Um, getting the right depth, you know, changing your feeding. Sometimes you, you sort of get a spell where you catch four or five really quickly and then you might not know what yourself but your feeding changes or the bit of cloud cover comes over and the fish just drop at different levels and you'll see a lot of the lads today they'll be constantly loads of top kits different depths working out the depth they might catch four or five fish real quickly on one rig and then switch to another and that's where people like Jamie and Jimmy and them that fish a lot of F1 style venues are ahead of the game do you know what I mean they're, they're on it they're they've also got on. soft mouths haven't they they have yeah yeah I mean the, the, the F1s you'll catch on the pole won't be a problem, but if you're catching F1s on the method, because they're fairly small and new fish, you tend to sort of get them three quarters of the way back and they just come off, which is frustrating. So um, ideally, you really want to catch carp on a method. Um, bigger fish because you're waiting for bites. You're not catching as quick, so you want to be coming back with a, a bigger fish. The last two hours, especially on this lake, there's a, there's a good head of six and eight pounds sort of fish in here, which naturally will feed down the edge the last two hours they're used to anglers packing away and you could you could be sort of zero to hero almost um you can be a busy fool and be beaving away and catching an f1 to chuck and you think you're doing really well there's sort of a ceiling weight of about 200 220 pound but i think to do a bigger weight you need to catch carp do you know that the sort of the technical side of this sort of fishing really interests me because it's almost two things i suppose a little bit like the Carasio fishing you yeah. see overseas, isn't it? Like yeah. the Italians and the Spanish and the French mm -hmm. are very, very good at that. So the sort of international style almost. Mm. But um, the other thing about it, you know, it's almost a bit like bream fishing. You've got to balance everything properly. If you get that wrong, you could end up, you know, not getting every single fish that pulls your tip round in the net, which must drive you crazy. Yeah. I mean, with F1s, they, they have a habit of 
taking your bait and not even showing a bite. Um, these guys will be using real short hook links to show the bite. Um, jigger rigs, some of them will be fishing conventional sort of fixed rigs, um, but the jigger works really well. Like we were saying earlier, when the fish are up and down at different levels all the time, um, because you're constantly lifting and dropping. Um, so yeah, if one's once you get it right, are the easiest fish to catch, and then another day they're the hardest <laughs> fish to catch. Well, now we've moved over to A section. We're on J, and we're looking at John Arthur, who is on peg number five and is just landing a fish. This is looking really interesting. We've been here a few minutes, and what's that, the fourth fish we've seen? Yeah, I think it's fourth or fifth fish, definitely. The only small F1s, but he's, he's, putting, he's busy putting fish in the net, and he seems to be rotating two shallow lines, cast a shallow lines down the edge. He's got a tree to his left, so he's got a bit of cover there, and then to his right, he's got some reeds that stick out, and I think he's, he's just throwing casters in both and just nicking a fish off each. It's fascinating because you've got, I mean, this is so, I've got to say, hats off to you for the pegging because it mm -hmm. looks awesome. Yeah. Um, and this this must be like match angler's heaven because if you look at the amount of options that John Arthur has around him, he's obviously now fishing his left hand margin. So he can literally nick a fish from that, feed, feed, yeah. rest it, yeah. go to the right, go straight out in front of him. Yeah, he's, got in, he's getting the fish competing and getting, let them feel safe so they're coming back to the cover. And he's straight in, in and out, rotating lines. Um, a small fish, so he needs to catch quite quickly to put a weight together of those. But I'm sure the bigger carp will muscle in later and he'll catch them amongst the, the small F1s. The other person to look out for in this section, and you're talking about you know, the benefit of maybe drawing, I'm not going to say end pegs, because they kind of have all got a bit end yeah, peggy it's, look it's to them. Continuous, yeah. But Ricky Small, who's also way up there in that, you know, again, the sort of section of death's territory, yeah. isn't it? It's yeah. so many good anglers have been drawn yeah. against each other today. And um, we see Ricky landing a fish as well. I mean, this is the peg, I think, that Andy Powell was on 12 months ago, yeah, wasn't it? he was on peg one. So he was a peg nearest the bridge, and the wind was absolutely howling in this end last year. Um, and he just caught shallow. But peg two, you got decent enough depth across and you've got cover. Now this section is looking particularly interesting Mr Bates because we're looking at Matt Pillay who is first peg in this section who reckons he's got about 40 pound with a fish on but from what I've seen going round in the other eight pegs or seven pegs with anglers on you've got Mark Price, we've got Billy Marlow both kind of in the same postcode mm -hmm. so really close. But at the other end, at top end of this section, Nick Speed probably is winning the section with £55. Yeah. It's going to be tight this, mate, isn't it? I think it will be a close section, yeah. Um, we said that Matt Peer was probably, if he didn't peg to his right, if he was a section to his right, he'd be the wrong end, but he's not too bad. Not too bad. It'll be real close. The last two hours, I think, will play a big part in this section. Yeah. Where Billy is, there's a lot of sort of six, seven pound fish, big mirrors. He's doing something different to a few of the other guys, fishing a method, to be honest, I don't know very much about at all, mm -hmm. which is the jigger. So mm -hmm. just explain what that's about. Um, so a jigger is, is um, it's, like, it's like a little bobbly float, but the line runs through the middle. So with these F1s that they're targeting, they're really sort of, they're sort of aggressive the way they take the bait, but they, they spit it out really quick. So your line is directly above the float, straight through to the hook bait. They'll be fishing a short hook link, probably two inch, three inch hook link, with three or four number eights directly above that. Any slight little indication, they hook themselves because your pole tip's directly above the, the fish, above the float. Um, and what they also do is they can lift and drop, so you're essentially lifting the hook bait through the centre of the float, if that makes sense. So you're jigging it up and down, up and down. Almost imitating with feed a, falling through the water. Exactly with a, obviously keeping a tight line so if you watch Matt he's just slowly lowering it through the float and he gets a little indication they hook themselves particularly good when the fish are really shallow as well um, lots of control as well yeah you're, you're in control of the, of the depth you want to fish at um, so yeah it's, it's a really really effective way of catching shallow well Al the kind of parameters of the, the competition have thrown Tom Calladine who we're looking at here on peg 16 on Raven, he's in F section, and it's just 
I, I love watching the way this process goes through. You know, look at the, the, the pegs here, are, uh, we've already touched on this. This is idyllic. I mean, look at it, it's just glorious. Mm. Loads of reeds, trees surrounding him. You could be, although he's in a match with 70 other people, he could be just fishing on his own somewhere for, on a yeah. pleasure session, couldn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, well, if you was to go pleasure fishing, you'd pick a peg like this, wouldn't you? Certainly would. Yeah. I mean, he's, uh, he's in the perfect two point club, I do believe. He's he won is, his section. Yeah, one matches, of three. So. Yeah, and you've got Matt Pilly to his left, who's also on two points. So, a bit of a battle, but they're in different sections. Yeah, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, Again, another anomaly of the draw. Yeah, but deja vu. I think this time last year we was watching uh, Steve Forster on this peg, who was leading the competition as well, wasn't he? So, yeah, he was. And this, interestingly, you mentioned that because this was actually Steve's most difficult match. I think mm. the draw, he, he struggled a bit on this peg. Mm. Managed to claw his way back I think and, he was and second, was yeah, yeah. finished second in his yeah, section. You have one, one eighty, one seventy, something like that. So. Yeah, and again, like you were saying earlier on, a lot of his fish came late on. Mm. Um, I'm interested to watch Tom's process here because when we saw him at Makins, he clearly enjoys fishing paste mm -hmm. and had a great weight. You know, beat some fantastic anglers in his section to get his second section win out of two. He's not fishing pace today. Um, he's fishing quite a technical match into a little hole over the far side and you know, very satisfying when it goes right but yeah. flipping difficult um, as we chatted to him at the end of the makings match I mean you know ex-professional rugby player he's a very very competitive mm. guy yeah um, he's not going to settle for you know just turning up and fishing a nice match no. is he, he no, no none of these boys are here for a day out there to win mm. aren't they you know yeah. it's a uh, serious competition and you know fishing this competition you're going to learn a lot as well fishing against the best anglers um, I mean you can see the serial winners how active they are you know they're feeding they're moving lines like when we was watching John Arthur earlier he was he was like an octopus he had arms <laughs> everywhere feeding and yeah. and uh, he didn't sort of settle on one line he was rotating a few lines but from what I've seen of Tom he catches three or four really quickly and then he has a little bit of a spell where they back away or they suss him out so all of a sudden, he's got to turn them into consistently catching, and um, like I say, he's had a good start, so I won't be disappointed with that start, especially on here. So let's just talk about what he's doing. So he's obviously um, shipped that into that little yeah, gap, and so the little vibrations with the pole tip, what's that Yeah, about? so it's, it's tapping. Um, a lot of venues don't allow it. We allow it here. So basically, he's just tapping his pole on the surface as if it's pellets or casters landing on the surface. The fish home in on the noise. There we are with his hook base right there, look. Has he got one on straight yep, away? straight away. Yeah. So what he's trying to do, he's trying to feed when he's not got his rig in the water. So he's now he'll get back to his top kit, he'll feed some, I'm not sure if they're pellet or casters, what his fish are feeding, but he'll feed, get the fish back in the area, and then when his rig's in the water, he'll just tap and try and sort of home them into the noise of his hook bait. So only his hook bait is left. He's, he's just done exactly what you yeah. said he was going to do, so. Yeah back to his top kit and a, and a bit of a feed with the catapult. Yeah, bring the other fish back into the swim. Um, so yeah, the F1s aren't that small in here, so they're, they're a pound and a half, two pound, three pound some of them, but the carp are what you need on this lake, and they do like paste. They certainly do. That one's safely in the net, what yeah. sort of size is that? I can't quite see. Uh, I think it's an F1. Talking about the, the kind of the way this competition goes, so obviously, yeah, we're at round three. Yep. One more to go after today. At what, at what point, do, you know, I suppose what you've got to do in this match, you've got a great kind of position where, for example, look at Tom Calladine at the moment, who's playing a fish. We're in a situation he's got perfect two from two. Mm -hmm. His absolute mission today is to stay in touch with everybody else in his section. That's it, yeah. He can actually afford to, I mean, you know, he could afford a third, really. Yeah, yeah, he, he could, but I fancy him, he's doing all right at the minute. He seems to be in I mean, tune. the dream, three, three points three would be points fantastic. Three points going into the last round. I don't think this time last year, no one had three points, did they? There was about four of them on five or so yeah. after the end of this match. And at the minute, Tom looks a pretty safe bet for a section win at the minute. So if he could, if we could pull it off, that'd be uh, a very confidence boost going into the last round at Barston. But we know Barston, it, <laughs> it proper can throw you a, a mix-up, can't it? Can. Looks like he's got a carp this time. Um, just the fact that it's hanging a bit deeper and it's taking him a bit longer to get in. Yeah. 
your nerves must start to jangle as well as you start to get towards the sharp end. And I suppose that it may be that guys like this, you know, he, he's been involved in professional sport yeah. for a long time. Yeah. He kind of, you know, he's been nervous going into games and that's yeah. then controlled it, that yeah. adrenaline rush that you get when you're playing sport. Yeah, I mean, obviously, a lot, you know, a lot of the lads fishing today, people like Jamie, Andy Power, they've been to Fishermania finals before. They know how to deal with cameras and the pressure, the limelight, it's, you know, for a lot of anglers, you go fishing and you sort of see people walking about and you think, oh, don't disturb my swim. But you've got to take that as the norm when you fish in these big matches because of the coverage. And yeah, I'm sure uh, I'm sure he'll be fine. That looks a good fish. It's possible to get to like that, I think. You know, the, the adrenaline buzz you get off of being under yeah. a bit of pressure. Um... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, some anglers just seem to pull it off, don't they? Peg four raven, there is Nick Speed, Alex, doing something slightly different to everyone else, yeah. which is interesting. Yeah, totally different, yeah. We just spoke to him and he felt that the fish were backing away because the amount of room we've got today, the, the carp have sort of pushed away. They're not ready to come in just yet. You see he's feeding his edge. He says they're just starting to rock up down there as well, so he's priming that. But, yeah, interesting tactics. He says it's um, a method very similar to what they used to do at Oasis, which is Lindome, which is... A, a big snake lake and um, yeah he's catching a few fish now so and again there he is isn't he so that's so, the yeah. third fish we've seen him hook fourth fourth, fourth, fourth you're fourth, right yeah yeah, right. yeah he's, he's catching steady he should get better and better from now on um, no one's setting it like no one's catching fast but um, probably two and a bit hours two and a quarter yeah we're hour. kind of halfway aren't we now the one thing we haven't done so far is go over and look at Magpie, yep. which we both know is likely to probably win the match today. Yes. I mean, there's no, there's no guarantees. No. It did no. last year, but yep. you know what that place is capable, capable yeah. of. Yeah, if them fish are feeding on Magpie, then it will be hard to beat. There'll be probably three or four anglers in that one particular section. Um, the peg that Ben won from last year, Fozzie's on this year, that'll be hard to beat. Uh, Alex Doherty on 28 is a good, good edge peg, good shallow peg. And um, there's a young lad on 36 that come practicing on Saturday and he'll do really well as well. So um, let's go and have a little look yeah. and see what's happening over there. Well, Al, we're looking at the first section on Magpie and there in front of us is Tom Newton, who is one of those just out of the, the top three. So Tom's fourth in the competition at the moment with a fish on, as you can see. Mm. Fishing, he's not yeah, moaning he's not been catching, but you know match anglers do that don't they yeah. having said that i think since we've been here he's put about 15 pound in this net with two yeah. fish yeah i think he's had two or three fish for 16 17 pound it's not a small fish either no no he's catching down to his right hand margin it's pretty deep down there but there'll be big fish when they rock up um same with alex opposite yeah he's, alex Stockerty, who bizarrely last year drew two pegs to his right he did yeah yeah and i think was he second in the whole match yes he was yeah, 270 odd pound did he have, 290 pound. Um, I don't think they're going to catch those sort of weights today. For, well, you never know, but they don't seem to be uh, setting the world alight at the minute. It's just steady away. Um, the chap on peg two seems to be plugging away, catching shallow. Yeah, that's A.D. Lindsay who's also in the frame. Right. Um, he's got a fish on at the moment too. So A.D. reckons he's got 40 or 50. Tom, we think, has got 70 maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Alex Doherty probably about the same. I just get the feeling this, you know, just like we saw on Raven. the other lake over on Raven. Really tight, nip and tuck. You know, again, the sort of percentages of who's going to be in front and who's just a little bit behind are going to be really small. Mm. This is top-level sport. It's apt absolute optimum, I think. Yeah. Well, we're looking over on uh, Steve Forster's peg, course, defending champion, and mm. won the event last year. That's the peg, of course, that Ben Townsend took yeah, the match took apart the match with last year, didn't he? Pound, £335 last year off that peg. Um, don't think them sort of weights are going to be happening today. Um, but I think he's fishing shallow. Is he on a jigger, maybe? It's hard to tell, really. But, um, yeah, I think he's on a jigger and um, cast a shallow. We're hearing that Fozzie's got a weight in excess of £100, which is the first tonne that we've heard of today. Again, of course, the match will build as, as we go from here. Yeah. Probably, um, certainly winning this section, 
Yeah. Um, it'd be great to see him because he's not had the greatest to run either. He had a shocking draw at Makins, um, a shocking draw also at Hallcroft. So mm. he's been kind of, although he's fought his way to, to getting the lowest points he can, he's not actually ever really been in contention to win a section yet, which is just, again, mm. as we've said earlier on today, the irony of the draw, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he is. I mean, he's on a, on a very good peg there. It's interesting looking at the the lake. I can remember being here last year and looking down on Ben Townsend's peg and it was black with fish. Yeah. You could see them on the surface layers. That's not the case today. No, no, different weather conditions. Um, this looks like a decent fish, Alex. Yeah, there should be. From now onwards, MF1 should have uh, disappeared now and they'll all be proper carp. He's certainly taking his time with it, which is a fair indication. And he yes. doesn't normally mess about landing no. fish. No, he's, he's used to catching big weights of fish, so it's probably one of them sort of three and four pound, big old uh, ghosty type things. He yeah, looks good fish. Very good fish. Well, Al, we're into the last hour. We're on the other section on Magpie watching Mac Duke with his pole in the air, and uh, he's obviously attached to something quite serious in there. I get the feeling that stuff is starting to happen. Mm. Yeah, definitely. You see people. They're moving a bit quicker. You, yeah. just, you, you, you know, there's elastic pouring out of the poles everywhere we look. So, um, and all I can hear is splashing. As I was well. just going to say, all I can hear is splashing from I the. I don't know if you can pick that up on the on the on the microphone, but yeah, it's um, this is the area I expect where a big weight is on the cards. Um, so yeah, it's, it's things are starting to hot up. Um, We're hearing some interesting stuff. I mean, you know, I, I think. From what I've seen so far, this has been a fascinating match, which is mm. when it always becomes really kind of quite Close. gripping. Yeah. yeah, I don't think. I mean, could be proved wrong here, but from what we've seen and heard, no one's running away with no. it like last year. Yeah. So we could have half a dozen people or so mm -hmm. on a reasonable total, and and you know it could come down to quite narrow margins. Yeah. We are hearing that back on Crow, where you know as we described it earlier on, the sort of section of death with Jamie Hughes and Dale mm. Shepherd and Jimmy Brooks and Steve Cook and a few others. It's not actually happened very well over there for Jamie, um, Jamie Hughes, so it could be interesting. He could be having a little wobble for the first time in the UK Champs. He could be. Um, but it is Jamie but Hughes. we haven't been around there to see no. it for ourselves, so we don't know, do we? Um, uh, it's, it's going to be close, which is, for me, is what I want to see as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, everyone's, oh, you want to draw a magpie. You know, they're fishing for a £1,000 to win the match, but it could be wrong and magpie is the lake, but... From what I've seen, there's no one really running away with it on any of the lakes, so... There is A.D. Lindsay. Pole tip in the air. I mean, this is just the classic case of a peg that's coming to life later on in the match. You know, we are inside that last hour. The investment of feed and patience going into what's going on there. I mean, you know, you're right, Alex. That, that looks like that is happening over there, doesn't it? Mm, definitely. You can see the reeds have been pushed down. I don't know if he's fishing there or not, but it looks like he might be fishing on down the edge with how deep he's fishing. Uh, but they're good fish. They are good fish. It's like you said earlier on, you could do £100 in the last hour without trying, surely. E easy, yeah. Yeah, when they rock up. it's um, Make sure your rig's in 10 seconds as the fish on. Well, we're back on Crow, and we're behind Jamie Hughes, who came into today's match as leader of the UK champs and interesting things are happening because Jamie Hughes says there is no way he's winning the section. It's definitely being won by Jimmy Brooks, who is one peg to his left. And Jimmy Brooks says, there's no way you want to listen to Jamie Hughes. He's definitely winning the section. I've got nothing like what he thinks he's got. So I'm guessing that Jamie Hughes and Jimmy Brooks are first and second in the section. Who is first and who is second? I think we're going to have to wait for the scales to come around to find out. But to be honest, if Jamie Hughes gets two points here rather than one, that would take him to four overall. That would not be a disaster for his UK Champs campaign. By the same token, Jimmy Brooks is back in sixth place and is also not far off that key area of going into Barston uh, with a chance of winning the match. So interesting stuff is happening. And there is a chance that over on the other lakes where the match is continuing for the last sort of 40 minutes or so, someone is going to put together a huge weight of fish because the fish really are starting to have a munch. Now, there is Jimmy Brooks out. 
he's gone back to fishing across on the feeder. Mm -hmm. He says he's got 63. 64 now. 64 now. Um, uh, and Jamie Hughes has just put a fish in the net too. So this is one of those peg-to-peg -peg battles. I mean, I think we kind of got the sense that was going to happen earlier, didn't we? Steve yeah. Cook's catching as well down the bank. Yeah. And we've also just spoken to um, Adam Playford on the MPEG on peg one who says he's got 40-odd fish, and I understand his counting isn't always no. as it might be. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, if he's got £50, he's got £100, put it that way. Right. But, um, yeah, he weren't giving away a lot, was he? No, but, but they, we understand these things. Yeah. What, have we got 40 minutes, half hour? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's, it's going to go right down to the wire, this, and I, I don't think any of these guys know who's got it, which is quite a nice place to be, really. No, no. And Jamie Hughes in again there, Alex. I mean... Mm. You know, this, this is going to be a fascinating section. And when the scales do come round, I mean, that's not a small fish. You know, when we compare that to what we were seeing earlier on on this lake. Yeah. So if Jimmy's got 60-odd and Jamie's kind Close. of up there with him, if they're catching carp, are we talking 150-ish? Maybe not that much? Like I say, it is hard to say. They're all shapes and sizes. Yeah. Um, probably one, 130 to 150, yeah. Right. Um, Likely yeah. to still, even though it's not fish like it did last year, likely to still see something, you know, fairly close to 200-ish, aren't we? To win the whole match? Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I would think there'll be a 200 somewhere, without a doubt. Um, we haven't covered Jay that much, so we don't know what they've caught around there either, do we? But this is going to be a tight section. Going back to Tom Caladine, he seemed to be doing really well. Yeah. Um, Speedy was catching too. Yeah. And he, had he was in, in a different Matt section. Pilly's section. Matt was catching steady. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be close. And uh, Tom Newton was up there as well on peg five on Magpie, saying he wasn't catching. But was Craig Tidswell also was starting to catch on yeah. paste. And you were saying earlier on, you know, on Magpie, they're big fish in there. Paste is that method, isn't it? It's that it method can that can catch it you can some be, huge yeah. weights. Yeah, there, there wasn't no one really attacking it there was the last sort of when we last visited there was more fish coming out but yeah. there was no one sort of running away with it so i love you know i love the fact that you the match angler in you is twitching because people aren't feeding enough casters <laughs> well it's not, <laughs> not so much that it's um i think when when i'm probably a prime example when you're not catching you tend to sort of ease back but on that particular you've got to be really aggressive and positive and make something happen um but everyone seemed a bit Maybe it's just the way the lake's fishing today, but um, yeah, it'd be, I wouldn't like to predict who's going to win. No, I really wouldn't. Last year we predicted the winner straight away, didn't we? After an hour and a half, we said Ben will win. This year, pff, could be any one of a dozen, really. Mm, yeah, definitely. Um, even Speedy, the way he was catching on that method really quickly, if he's carried on catching that way now, you just don't know, do you? Jamie's into another one. Yeah, and interesting, his catch rate is upped from they're, from Jimmy. Yeah, they're, they're good fish as well, aren't they? You can get them in quicker. I mean, Jimmy's slowed down quite a bit to what he was, but um, maybe it's us putting the Jonah on him, but looks a good fish. Safely in the net again, yeah. and another three or four pounder. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Well, look, clock's ticking down. Yeah. You need to go and get your way party prepared yeah. for the uh, the big event. I shall let you crack on and do yeah. that, and we shall see what see story you. the scales tell yeah. us, mate. Thank you very much. See you in a bit. See you in a bit. Right, so here we go then. We're on Jamie Hughes's peg, Jimmy Brooks next door. Absolutely no clue who has won this match or who has won this section. You know, this has been an absolutely brilliant contest. The scales are here, so let's see who is gonna take the honors. I just remember coming into this match, Jamie was leading the whole thing. Two perfect scores from two matches, two section wins. And he has to only beat the seven other anglers in his section, Jimmy Brooks included, to take the single point. 144.06 with one net to go for Jamie Hughes. So. If he has split his nets evenly, we're going to be approaching 200. And I don't think he's going to be far off. There's a few, yeah, there's going to be 40 pound in there. So fascinating to see these top level match anglers comparing their scores. Now then, what have we got here? 
It's another 40 odd. 46 2 ounces. 46 sir. pounds 2 ounces for Jamie in his last weight. So, the total for Jamie Hughes 190 Jamie. 190 pounds yes, and 8 ounces. That is a hell of a weight. Is that going to be enough? I don't know. I'd love it to be. I don't mind. I'll honestly take second. I'll be happy going to Barston with four points. That'll do. That's a chance of winning. And I definitely owe Jimmy, so I wouldn't mind him meeting me today. Isn't it great? The yeah. fact he's given you all the skinny and you draw next to each other. It's crazy, isn't it? Funny. Yes. And it's been a bit of a match like that, Jamie, because loads of people have drawn next to other people that they shouldn't I have think. drawn. It's just been brilliant. Quite And bizarre. it's been quite hard. Yeah, it's just a bit tricky. A lot trickier than we expected today, hasn't yeah. it? Well, it's... look, let's go and see what he's got. I know you don't want to watch, do you? No, I don't want to watch. Just tell me. <laughs> I'll know by his reaction in a minute. This is going to be close. He was admitting to 63, 64 fish about half an hour or so ago. And when we were here watching the two of them in action, it was pretty close fish for fish. So he's probably had another 10 fish maybe. So that's 70. Now, would you believe it? Between the two of them with three ways, they're both on 144 pounds with four ounces between them. So it's all down to the last bag. Has Jimmy got more than 46 pounds? I'm not sure he has, you know. This is going to be ounces. This is going to be ounces. This is going to be ounces. Oh, now then. 191 pound 10 for Jimmy Brooks. 190 pounds and eight for Jamie Hughes. So that means that in this section, Jimmy has taken the honors, a single point, and Jamie, we think, has got two points to weigh in the rest of the section first but it looks like a point for Jimmy Brooks and two points for Jamie Hughes. I think coming into today everything was so close you know the top 20 we talked earlier on about maybe the top 20 still being in it of course you came into this sixth position you're still in that points race a single point from today puts you right back in it for Barston doesn't it? Yeah Barston was cruel though isn't it? I, I love hate relationship with Barston so yeah no that's where you want to be you need to be in the race in the last match um, and thankfully I'm still going to be there or thereabouts, hopefully. Congratulations, mate. Well Cheers. fished. Thank you. Well done, Izzy. Perfect. Good girl. Right then, Matt Pillay is in a section where it looks like he might be finishing second or third because Nick Speed at the top end, who was having a cracking spell earlier on, has had £184 and is currently leading the section. And Billy Marlow has had £124. It's been a frustrating match for Matty Pillay. He's had to chop and change between methods. Hasn't managed to get his fish to settle. When he went down the edge, he's just told me the fish weren't there. They wouldn't feed properly. So that kind of banker edge swim that he was hoping for to kind of put a few extra, extra pounds in the net towards the end of the match just didn't happen. So 106 pounds and five ounces for Matt Pillay. That puts him third in the section. So the only angler left coming into today who was on a perfect score is Tom Calladine, and this is his way in. So he had two section wins out of two. Has he made it a hat trick? Will he be top of the pile going to Barston? Thirty-four two. Four. So £149 and four ounces for Tom Calladine in his section. He's the first away here, so we'll have to wait and see if anybody else has nicked a point off Tom Calladine. I know you probably won't like me saying this, but this has been a hell of a match. It's been great to watch. Yeah, it's been a nice match. I've had a good peg to bear battle with Matt, obviously, he went in my section, but I've had a fish every put in, a lot of F1s, and they just don't weighed. I yeah. thought I had a bit more than that, to be honest. I've had 149. I've had a lovely day fishing, I've caught casters across, I've caught some late up down the edge. I thought I had a better stamp and a, a bit of a better weight. I thought it's the I was way it goes though, isn't it? I thought I was touching 170, 190 sort of thing, but 149. Of course, you're the first way in this section. Have you heard anything else from I, up there? I, Do we I, know anything? No, I ain't got a clue. Obviously, they're, they're a long way away from me now, these are. So, um, we'll see. There's a couple of M pegs, there's a decent peg there that, that won the match on Sunday. I think the top three weights come from the 20s, so... Just to, make, wait. just to make the old nerves jangle a wee bit, Tom, um, Jamie Hughes hasn't won his section, and obviously Matt hasn't won his either. So at the moment, as it stands with the rest of your section to weigh in, you're the only one with a perfect point sport score going into the last bit of the way. So you could be top of the pile going into the last match. There's, another, there's another six people to weigh in. 
I, I, you can't put your cards on the table yet, can you? You can't. There might be another five people that beat me there and uh, I might have bombed out, but you never know. It's fishing, isn't it? It is. We, we shall see. We shall keep our fingers crossed. We will. We shall. So we've gone all the way around to the end of the section. Here's Jeff Wiseman's peg and at the moment... Tom Calladine is still leading the section with £149, 4 ounces. Now, the rumour is that Jeff has had 80 F1s. If he's had that and they're £2 or £3, he has won the section and possibly the match, which will mean that Tom Calladine will finish second in section. Worst case scenario, Tom has got two points, which will mean he's on four going to Barston. Tom's just said to me that he's never been in this position in a big match before. Well, not a fishing match anyway. Probably been in this position in a big rugby match once or twice. But not so much fishing. Where it's kind of completely out of your hands and you're wondering what other people have done. So I think his nerves are jangling a wee bit. £33.4 for Jeff Wiseman at the other end of the section. That is £131. Which means Tom Calladine, £149 has won the section and is on a single point so has a perfect score going into the last match at Barston. 131.10 confirmed <laughs> and the relief is tenable. <laughs> Tom? <laughs> How is that? You don't want to weigh in first in section do you? So it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, I follow up way in. There's been a couple of hundred pounds, and then Jeff's had about 80 F1. So, last last man on MPEG, I thought it's uh, could be crunch time. And then, obviously, that last net's gone 33 and a bit. So, you need a 50 pound last net. So, three section wins. You can't have so much more, can you? Can you, comp I mean, all the places you've been in your professional sports career, can you compare <laughs> any of that to this? I've played in front of about 20,000 at Leicester and Captain England. So, uh, it's not bad. Like I say, it's in top five still. But your nerves are in shreds. Look at yeah, you. Yeah, I know, a bit shaking. But I've, I played Skittles, I played Skittles Monday night against uh, our rivals, and I, I feel in a pub full of twenty people, I feel more <laughs> tense than that. I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy as Larry. I can't moan one bit, can I? I've had a nice day's fishing. I've won my section. That's all I needed to do. And uh, then it's game on for Boston, I guess, isn't it? So we're on peg thirty-four of Magpie, and here is Steve Forster, the defending champion of the UK champs who came into today's match in 15th position on six points after, it's got to be said, a couple of draws which did him no favours in the first two matches. But today, he has pulled out the peg that won the match last year for Ben Townsend with over £300, and Fuzzy has done the business again. So there's a very good chance here that Steve Forster will win the match. So here is Steve Forster's final weight, £218 with... Half a dozen decent sized rookery carp going into the waist link. He estimated 240 and I don't think he's going to be that far off. So 264 pounds and nine ounces for Steve Forster caught on the very peg that won the match here at Rookery last year. That gives him a single point going into that final competition at Barston Lakes. And that single point will put him on seven, which gives him just the slenderest of chances of holding onto his title. Today's winner with a weight of £264.9 ounces, current, current UK champion, Stephen Forster. You're going to get a bigger mantle for you. So here's the state of play after three rounds of the UK champs. It's Tom Calladine, the ex-professional rugby player, who's emerged from the scrum with the ball firmly in his grasp. A perfect three points from three. If he wins his section at Barston Lakes, he'll claim the title. But there's an awful lot of fishing to be done first. Jamie Hughes, Matt Pillay, Jimmy Brooks and even former champion John Arthur are snapping at his heels. After so many dramas in the first three rounds, there's bound to be another twist in the final one. Well, Rookery Waters may have only joined the UK Champs portfolio 12 months ago, but I'll tell you what, it's certainly become a firm favourite with all the anglers fishing. What an incredible day of match fishing. And we go into Barston with the whole UK Champs hanging by a thread. Tom Calladine leads the pile, the rest of the pack are chasing, snapping at his heels. 
In a few weeks' time, we're going to see one of the best fishing matches you could possibly hope to see. Wow, just amazing.